but um, on a more serious note, um, a lot of nuggets are there, and uh, if you have been preached from that very scripture, uh, there were times where I emphatically stated that um, the priest had to be seen by the leper who was healed because, number one, the Jewish people had a custom in the book of Leviticus, the chapters in verse 14 and 15, that if you were a leper, it was the priest who would examine you and ascertain fact to be very sure um, whether you are truly a leper or not. And then, after he had been able to diagnose that you were a leper, what he does is that he condemns you and puts you in isolation. So in those days, in those days, leprosy was uh, more or less uh, like the coronavirus. And I would say uh, to the Ghanaians that the priest was like the Okay. Okay, so um, you take him through the last, in essence, and then after that, the priest will condemn you officially, publicly declare you a leper. Then he will put in isolation today a morning we're quarantined. And then after that, you are to wear a Sakura haircut, you are to wear a particular clothes, and you are to be moving about, screaming all the time, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. And that was the plight of this very leper. Okay, so when he came to meet Jesus and Jesus what he healed, certainly he had to also go to the priest when the priest examined him to ascertain whether he was healed or not. Because in the priest who condemned you, that son publicly announced to the people of Israel that you were healed, what people see when they were stoned? Because they saw leprosy to be so infectious that anybody who get connected to it could be infected by it. And so Jesus certainly told him, go and never show yourself to anybody. But certainly the priest would have to meet the man to be able to confirm totally that he was healed before he would be accepted in the community. So that he told him not to meet anyone, he didn't mean that he was supposed to be the priest. Uh, let me just be very sarcastic here. And so you have to learn to treat people differently. Uh, some are nobody, some are somebody's. So once um, a sister came to me and said that God had told her to go on a um, 14 days fast, and God had told him never to pick any call from anybody. And I said, and that doesn't mean when your boss calls you, you don't have to pick up because yes, you've sought for leave, permission and everything, but there could be an emergency at work and when your boss calls you, you have to pick a call because it's not part of the nobody who has told you what you do. You get a paycheck from him and then you're the night. When your pastor calls you, you don't know maybe I had a prophecy for you during your fasting, you have to pick a call. And so um, that is that is that is the, the, the revelation behind why he says to man, not to see anybody in that time to go to. Wow, that's a great one coming from our bishop. So I believe we've all been blessed here. This shows that we shouldn't treat people equally. Okay? We have some people who will be a blessing to you and be able to show yourself to them. Like Daddy Riley said, if your boss is calling you and you're not picking, remember your paycheck is at stake. So definitely you have to change. I think you have to read Sundays. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Daddy, so the so second one. Sunday's pick up call. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daddy. So the second question is that from the story, I also realized that a man wanted to give the priest an offering. But the, the revelation that just came, I realized he started, he's isolated. You know when the COVID came, we were all in this. And we were all asked to stay at home, you know, wash your hands, all of that. And this is the plight of the man. He's left he's a leprous man. And therefore, has a Sakura haircut, tattered clothes, also isolated, where people were not even allowed to get close to, get close to him. So, how did he get the money? Where did he get the money? To so even think of going to the priest to so so I see, yeah. So that I don't know if you could help us how this leprous man got money and wanted to get. You know, the, the, like back again to the Jewish custom. They had a custom. If you were healed or if you go to the priest, you would have to go with an offering okay. to go and thank God for how far he's brought you and what that good thing he has done for you. 
I want to digress and say that um, Ghanaians must understand that offering is part of the work of God. And so sometimes people hear somebody going to church and give an offering to support God's work and people are really blasting the person, criticizing the person. If you go to the house, you, you go to uh, the lawyer, the lawyer's office for assistance and you have to pay a consultation fee. And we, we, we go to the doctor's office and have to pay a consultation fee. And uh, we why again? People are taking bribes and everything. We don't take bribes, but at least um, go to the church, go to the house, go supporting God's work is fantastic. It helps in the hands of God. But um, 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 to back to the question, um, the, the Jewish people are accustomed that you, you want to go to the priest and go to yourself, so you have to also go and perform a sacrifice and give the offering. You see, so your question is. Um, um, the man had been put in isolation for how many months we don't know. How could he have gotten that money to be able to um, perform that duty and to give it, give it to a priest? Um, I don't know. Nobody was going to see him um, in isolation. Maybe while he was condemned, he had some few um, changes with him, some, some money with him. Or maybe whilst at the isolation, he was um, um, working small, small jobs even amongst the lepers who were around and he was able to raise something small and before he moved as a translation and there are lots of revelations there um, I saw that um, the first revelation is that if you are ostracized and, and incarcerated or put behind bars or um, um, rejected or rejected by people that doesn't mean that you should not find yourself something new I believe the man was though um, 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 quarantined, he was doing something, you know, maybe reading something or try, doing something, you know, skill, he had learned a trick or something. So he one way or the other had something with him. So when the opportunity came for him to go to himself, the priest certainly had something on him to go give it out. Uh, he probably was in was was saving, you know, so then don't eat everything in the morning, otherwise you wouldn't have something they need to eat. Mm. He probably was in, in, investing in whatever that was coming into his hand. So when the privilege came for him to um, pull out something from the story, he had something to go deliver. And what I'm trying to say is that um, this is it's, it's a very powerful question. This is to prove to all of us that uh, we must think about tomorrow. We should be able to plan. We should be able to put things in the rightful perspective because there could be eventualities. When it happens like that, you should be able to follow the storages and pull them up to be able to use it to help your world and your generation. You uh, didn't ask this question, but let me just uh, uh, say this to Ray. Um, there was no record that when he went and gave the offering, the priest rejected it. Mm. Now, this was a man who had uh, been. Um, isolated because of his leprosy and they felt leprosy was so infectious that should anybody get connected to they could be um, infected or could they could contaminate the, the, the virus. Uh, but now Jesus tells him right here, go give your offering to um, the priest and when he went with the offering and the priest didn't reject it. I realized that God shows up on your case and your past is wiped out and um, um, he puts a spring in your feet and put a gleam in your eye. And what I see is that your your naysayers, your critics, your castigators, um, um, the people who look at you and, and call you useless, uh, will now see you to be valuable and very important in your world and in your generation. I mean, it's so evident, it's so clear that the man had now mattered. He went and, and the priest did not this time throw him out. And, and we are talking about him 2,000 years after his existence. That, that means that no matter how bad the situation is, still look to God, the altar and the finisher of your faith, let it come through for you. When it comes through for you, what will happen is that uh, your, your critics, your naysayers, your castigators, people who, call, who saw you and asked who are you, will begin to meet you and ask you how are you. Wow. And so let's try to put something there, just in case of eventuality, because we'll be told one day to to pay our dues we told one day uh, to, 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 to pay for the school fees of our children. We told one day, even if you're in isolation, that there will be the need for it to support uh, humanity, be philanthropic, to support the widows, 
support less privilege. And if you don't have anything as a backing call, how will you be able to and, 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 and pay your dues to your generation? So, yeah, that is that. The man, I believe, had, had, had some, had some qualities in some lives of the body of Christ that we have to really emulate because and the how he even had the offering to present to the priests after all these months of being in isolation, it's a whole mystery. Yeah. That thing, the guy was a smart guy. I think we have to be looking for that. God bless you. Yeah. So, um, what I also picked there is that you don't have to spend everything or you don't have to eat everything in the morning versus the evening you have nothing to eat. So, keep saving and also make good use of your skills. Mm. Have a side hustle. That we always say, have a side hustle. If you're not doing nothing at home, I believe if you're able to start something little, little by little, you'll be able to save up something. So that when the time comes, the time of need comes, you'll be able to get something to support yourself, to even give out to a priest. And it's going to give in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We have a lot of confidence. <laughs> All right, so thank you, thank you very much for that one. That was very powerful. And also, from the same story again, I also realized that, you know, the man, the leper's man, said he wanted to go and worship Jesus. You are lepers, you are kept isolated from your family, you are kept isolated from the masses. But here you go again, you want to go and worship Jesus. And just when he thought about it, he stepped out. God without you. So I don't know if you can also help us. It is, it's, it's amazing. I've read that, that very portion of scripture and I've picked so many cues from it because uh, this was a man, like you're saying, um, 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 isolated, ostracized from family probably months. I never met the wife. If he had one, I never seen his children. Uh, so certainly, um, 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 he would have developed some weird attitude, you know, probably would have behaved um, very depressed. Uh, uh, the, the probably to the tendency of he uh, being very bitter, very hateful, very thankful, very angry, was very high. I mean, because um, he had become a victim of circumstance. I don't think anybody just decides to be a lemma. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So um, he could have had all kinds of shady um, and behaviors, but I love one thing about the man, like you rightly said. The Bible says that when he heard that Jesus was passing, he stepped out of isolation, and the first thing he did was to worship. How could a man lepre, hmm, lepros, a man driven away from family, a man made to shave his hair, a man every time shouting among the tree, even why shouting among the and still worshiping Jesus at the same time as the Holy Spirit? Yeah. With all this plight, he still cuddled before Jesus and worshiped him. And I guess that no matter how bad it is, develop an attitude of gratitude. Wow. The man, I believe, was like, if I'm not dead and I'm alive, even in my left of state, Father, I'm grateful that I'm a leper and I'm still alive. Because I believe at that time, most lepers men were dead. So that he had the gift of life and the miracle of mercy alone felt he it was incumbent on him to worship the Lord. And so yes, you probably have not as yet gotten some miracles expected. Maybe you trust in God for money you've not had it. You trust in God for a marital bliss you've not had it. You trust in God for a visa you've not had it. You trust in God for a child after a wedding for one, two, three, four, five years you've not had it. That is not enough reason to commit suicide. The man could have been suicidal. Yeah. Yes. Being driven away from the family. He would have been that. But I love one thing that he had an actual of gratitude. When he had Jesus was in town, he came prostrating before him and worshipped him. Let's learn from this. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times for his grace and continually be in my mouth. Psalm 103, verse 1, bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth me? all my sins and who healed me of all my diseases, who crowns my head with love and kindness and terrible mercies, who satisfied my mouth with good things, and who renewed my strength like that of the eagle. Looking at all these things, you've not as yet gotten some miracles expected, but looking at all these things at this side of the pendulum, 
we gotta be grateful like this man did. He had not been healed yet, but he came worshiping Jesus. And I think this goes to we the Christians. Sometimes worship them and people are standing at Kimbo, watching the prison, watching me that saying to themselves that this guy looks like he just ate a bit here before he came to Mount Paul. He probably had money, had got a good job, he had a good car, that's why he's all over the place inside and praising God. But that you didn't have a car, you didn't have a job, you didn't have that money as expected at what time, does not negate the fact that you have to stay prostrate before him. And was it? This was a leper. And he was still worshiping God. What a night to Wow. And yet, he knew that it is when praises goes up, miracles in the middle of the coming down. And walking through the story, that attitude attracted a miracle for him. And he never ended his life ever. So keep praising God despite the negatives. One of these days is glory. Amen. 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 Um, we are so sorry, viewers. I believe um, some messages are coming that our sound is not too clear, but our technical team is also working at it, and then I, I believe in because we will get the solution. Thank you. Daddy, God bless you so much. You're um, I also think the clue from what you just said. Um, I think we have to be grateful. That you just said it. We mm -hmm. ought to be grateful to God. In our high times, in our low times, just be grateful. And I also saw that the guy, the leper's man, had faith. Sure. The faith he even needs to step out to come and worship is what made uh, all the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the word master is here himself. And I'm really getting blessed. So I hope you're also getting blessed. Okay, so that is my next question is that Jesus touched him. Mm. He touched him, even though he was a leprous man, and he believed that his leprosy can spread. But he still touched him. Why did Jesus do that? Um, <laughs> I don't know why he did that, though, but I was not in <laughs> <laughs> But at least um, after reading the Bible, um, you don't touch a letter, you know this. And we're all here with the coronavirus and with what really happened and what transpired. Um, um, you touch the leper, you are infected. You touch it, you are contaminated with leprosy. Okay, so uh, in those days, whether you were a priest, whether you were a prophet, you don't touch lepers. Okay? But here was Jesus. The man came, pleaded, requested that if he can make him clean, he should go ahead and minister to him. And Jesus touched the leper. I think we were doing this for three reasons. Number one, to let the man know that, hey, you don't infect me, I infect you. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, um, 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 it is to prove to all of us that your, your badness cannot affect Jesus' goodness. Mm. That's a good one. No matter how bad you are, if you come in contact with him, you cannot influence him, you rather influence him. That's why as convicts, we smokers, hard crack cocaine dealers, bad people, hard nuts, mattress, Rahab, a prostitute, mm. Joseph a prisoner, Paul a murderer. If a Paul instigated the killing of Stephen, mm. but these people come in contact with Jesus when He touches them, mm. their lives are transformed. They end up becoming pacemakers, chain blazers, preachers of the same gospel they are persecuting. Just to prove to everybody that if He touches you, He can affect your life. That's so why Jesus comes to a community. We touch his people and bad, not and bad. You see, that's why we know how to get Jesus out of our communities. That's why we are not supposed to get Jesus out of our countries. That's why we are not supposed to uh, get prophets and, 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 and take God out of the system. That's why our schools must still, when, when we're growing, we're having morning devotions in schools, there was SU, scripture in the schools. These things instilled in we, the children, a great deal of godly virtues that has brought most of us this far. And so when Jesus touched the people, he affected and infected them. The second thing that I saw that thing is the reason is that 
um, 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 they can turn the deepest part of your life. You see, uh, people go through so much in life and, and they don't want to go up, they don't want to come out. So you see that they develop defenses, defensive mechanism, and they call it, we are classic people, uh, we are ill, and, and we are talking, and you see that sometimes they're in me, in me. You understand what I'm saying? They, 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 they talk and they, 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 they slay. But most of these slay are real nice. You understand? They are covering up. Oh, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> People are wearing a facade, you see makeups, but behind the makeups are tears. So for Jesus to talk the man, he was trying to tell everybody that he can talk the deepest part of his soul. Why no man can touch? Why when we are even hiding behind the facade, coming before the congregation and acting like I'm bowing, prostrating, hiding your leprosy, you can touch that aspect of him that no man can even see. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I feel like, can I go ahead and tell somebody watching me that you're probably hiding behind the facade? So people are hiding behind certificates. I have PhD. I have masters. But you cry every night because of that infirmity, that sickness. It's about to teach you pain. And you call it different. And then the third reason I believe, up until this time, every priest this man had met had condemned him. And Jesus was the only priest left. That's the only hope. So Jesus had to embrace him and touch him to let him know. Everybody condemns you, but I don't condemn. In Christ, there is now therefore no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Them who do not walk after the flesh, but after the spirit. And I believe something was really great in that man that day that spread him on to know that, hey, if Jesus is the greatest physician and brings me and touch me, I'm excited. And I believe that Jesus did that to really prove to the man that people may hate you so bad, but I love you so well. I think that's the reason why I'm just... Jesus loves us. Uh, this, is, this is just touching because, wow. I just want to know that he has already explained everything, so I have much to say on that. Um, so my next question, buddy, is that the leper's man wanted to be healed. And he asked, he asked Jesus if he could be cleansed. Mm. And Jesus said, I will. This makes me understand that Jesus wants to heal us. Mm. So if he I, wants to heal us, I, I believe our see. viewers, yeah, mm. exactly. Some of our viewers are sick, they are wondering if God can heal them, if a prayer can go forth to them. Then you are here, so I'll just give you to at least pray for someone, talk to us about why even Jesus decided to equally cleanse this man. Mm. Is it, uh, uh, um, we have to understand first of all the reasons why Jesus came to the world. And that's, that's why we are celebrating Easter. Yeah. Okay. Um, Adam and Eve <clears throat> disobeyed God in the garden. They have been told not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan came through the serpent and asked them, have been told not to eat many trees of the garden? And then Eve said, God had told us to eat from the trees of the garden, but from this very tree. And Satan lied and said, God knew that the day you eat from the tree, you become like God. Adam and Eve were not supposed to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil to be like God. They were already created in the image of God. Like Most of them, like I said all the time, Satan is an expert in mixing lies with the truth. Or so I've said. And because of their disobedience, they ate the fruit, and disobedience is a sin. So sin entered the world from that day with his great deeds, death, indebtedness, depression, and all these negativities came into the world. Now, because a man gave that authority as a custodian of the earth, Adam to Satan, God couldn't have come into have taken it back from Satan. So God had to come in the person of a man through the womb of a woman to be born by a virgin Mary so that he would come walk on this thing like everybody and then go and take what Adam gave to Satan back and hand it over to humanity. Now back to your question. So the Bible says in 1 John 3, 8, for this purpose, 
the Son of Man was made manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. So Jesus came for a purpose. And one of the purposes is to destroy the works of the devil. In Luke chapter 19, verse 10, the Bible says that he came to seek and to save that which was perishing. So he also came to seek and to save. But one of the middle things was that he came to destroy the world. And the one of the works of the devil is, is sickness. I mean, I get surprised when I hear people advocating and that it's good to be sick. And when you get sick, God is teaching you a lesson. It's a lesson. Life alone is enough a lesson for me. I don't want to say that God who wants to get me sick. It's a lesson. What kind of father is that? When my children are sick, I, I, I won't do anything to make sure they are healed and they are restored in any way. Why? Because a good father wouldn't want any sickness for his children. You see? So for Jesus to tell the man, I will, I want you to be healed, means he was telling everybody that that was one of the main reasons why he came. And Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, verse 3, that, was, that when the Messiah comes, the proof that he is the Messiah is that he will be wounded for transgressions, he will be good for iniquities, the testament of our peace will be upon him, and by his stripes we are going to be healed. And so on Calvary in John 19, 30, Jesus publicly declared, it is finished, saying bye-bye to sickness, welcome to a brand new life where I enjoy the privileges of healings. That's why today I can stand boldly and declare, I shall not die, I will live to declare the works of God, no weapon from the gates which shall prosper, eyes have not seen nor ears yet, neither has it entered into the heart of man, but God has done the very love of God, because He has made me fit to stand and declare his much words. And so to tell everybody watching us today, if you told the man that I will be now cleansed, I just let you know that no matter how severe the sickness is, no matter how chronic the sickness is, Jesus still wants to be in you. Thank God for doctors. The medical professions that no one man are mad doctors. I have a lot of them as my friends. It's an amazing profession. But sometimes they speak facts. They don't speak the truth. The truth is only with Jesus. That's why a medical doctor can tell you that you pass your menopause and you cannot have a child, but God can come in and then the person who has been menopause can have a visitation from God and the person can have twins. I preach to somebody in Switzerland who at the age of 58, right? 58. 58. 58 got pregnant and gave them to twins, a boy and a girl and named them after. God of all flesh will say anything to the God for him. Ephesians 3 when he is able to do excellently, abundantly about what you think or ask according to the power that works in you. And so if you are sick in any part of your body, just as he did for that labor, I am certain he will do it for you today. You just have to believe in the word of God. I pray and I curse every sickness in your body and I demand him to flow through you. If it's a black condition, be healed. If it's an eye problem, be healed. If it's a problem to do with your knee, your waist, your backbone, I demand your healing and I prophesy. If the sun shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. And he said yesterday to them, brother, if you do it for him, he can do it for you too. In Jesus' name. I think I, I did just want to do it. Yes, I did. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm getting inside, Pastor. I'm getting inside. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, that is all. My last question is going to be like this. You know, before I mentioned, I had discussions with people, and lots of people kept saying and asking. So I also want to ask, why is it that Jesus, it takes so long for him to actually, you know, um, should I say bless us? His promises come, but it keeps longer than sometimes it should. Even bringing it to the story. I believe it, it, it went months on months before this leprous man got in touch with Jesus. And just when he got in touch with him, he happened to get an instant miracle. But at the same time, over the months, I believe he was equally praying. So why the delay? Uh, there was no established fact that he was praying. Yeah. Uh, so that we cannot theoretically uh, um, accept that. Okay. But um, uh, truth be told, uh, God deals with us in times and seasons. Okay, in Ecclesiastes in the chapter three, 
the verse 1, the Bible says that to everything under the sun, there's a time and a season for it. And I want to go further, I say that a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant a seed and a time to harvest it. A time to laugh, a time to cry. So, so we have times and seasons, okay? And so when you read the Bible, and back to the question, you, you see times where the Lord visits people and then he tells them like Abraham, when God visited him, he told Abraham and his wife that next year about this time, your wife Elizabeth, and your wife Saria will embrace a child. So there is a next year about this time kind of blessing. And the same angel Gabriel visited Zachariah and assured Zachariah, next year about this time, your wife Elizabeth will have a child. So there is a next year about this time kind of blessing. But then we also saw the tomorrow by this time kind of blessing too. The tomorrow by this time kind of blessing. Tomorrow by this time. Like when there was a famine in the city of Samaria and the prophet Elisha was made to prove that. He said tomorrow by this time a valley of farm flour shall be sold for a second. And it did happen that within 24 hours um, the case of poverty had been broken and everybody in the land of Samaria was enjoying booty and abundance. I mean, the 24 hour miracle tomorrow by this time also happened to Joseph. Within 24 hours a prisoner had risen to prominence and become a prime minister. So it's possible. Then we have the immediate kind of blessing. That was the kind of blessing this man really attracted. And so I don't know what you're going through, but God decides when He settles people's situations for them. I also believe that timings are also dependent on our actions and inactions. Imagine if this man had not stepped out of his isolation, he would have been in a state the rest of his life. And so that's your attitude. You see, so sometimes a miracle delays because people's attitudes are not in conformity with the scriptures or the hard work expenditures we have to be able to attract the blessing. And so, yet the onus does not only lie on God, it also lies on you, the individual. If you want it quick, there are things you do. You pray, you fast, you tight, you serve God faithfully so that God can see your consistency and then iron can sharpen iron to help God facilitate the progress of the miracle that was given to you. But certainly, we serve a God who gives the immediate miracles. And it did for a man, and if you can trust him, he's able to give you the immediate miracle. Yeah. So are you having a problem? Are you having a wish? Are you having something on your heart that you want God to do for you? If you do, then I believe our father has said it all. You have to trust God. Have faith in him. And know that certainly when the time comes, he will do it for you to the glory of God. Amen. So then, thank you so much. We really enjoyed this session with you. As but our, the bishop. Yeah, Hello. as the bishop. So I would like you to look into the camera, speak to our viewers, and also uh, add the story to leave you. Any message, any? I want to say from the very story you read that the man came a leper, but did not return a leper. Mm -hmm. You entered this year with a whole lot of mess, a whole lot of frustrations, a whole lot of despondencies, a whole lot of negativities. But you will never end this year with the same depressive and frustrating situation. God will turn things around. I just can't imagine the joy that this man brought his family when he got home and everybody saw him no more ever. Your family will see you and they will see you totally changed and liberated. I just can't fathom. What happened to the priest that condemned you when you saw him with an offering to him? All your critics, your condemners, all your naysayers, all your castigators, this year will see you radiating God's glory. Amen. And they will say, This is indeed the finger of God. I don't know if the man had a fiancé, <laughs> had a girlfriend, had some friends, probably entered their house and told them, And you see, don't they, when you're a leper, your hands were broken. Your nose, lepers could break your nose and you talk, oh, oh, oh. you see. And this man enters the house, and everybody, all his friends saw him, was not you, oh, oh. 
it was not having your design broken, it's not broken by your totality. God will totally change your story and brush you up and bring color to your life. And people will look at you and say, indeed, the God is a Thank you, Daddy. So we have a couple of messages here. Um, so we have Priscilla Fiatu. She says, powerful. Then we have Leticia Moko Achim says, I want to be infected by the Jesus Christ virus. Wow. <laughs> we have Batonlo Kwao. Oh, okay. God bless you, Bishop, for such a powerful teaching. Bishop, kindly pray for me. Today is my birthday. Wow. 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 I'll be glad to do that. Batonlo is one of our wonderful followers. He's in Tabari. He's one of my sons. I pray happy birthday, son. I bless you and bless the family and declare that as your base, so shall it strength be in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. And we have Bishop now Bianchi. He said, Bishop, please check your son. I think it was corrected. Thank you very much. More grace, sir. And God bless you, Bishop now. And then we have Ethiam. He says, God bless you, my prophet. Good one, Junior. Jesus wants me healed. By his stripes I'm healed. This year is my year for my company. Salon Baja says, Amen. Book um, One Dina says, I'm working through on every side in Jesus' name. Siata says, Powerful. Book One Dina says, Miracle no the entire Jesus. Patricia Makoaju says, Amen. And also we have Sam Dandi. He says, Our generation is part of the Papa. Keep living. And then on YouTube, we have the Nessin Kaza says, God bless you, Bishop. Um, Bukwan Jina says, more Rima, I'll make good use of my skills. The Nessin Kaza says, supernatural Rima. Michael Okoku, blessings, Bishop. Michael Okoku again says, you are a blessing. Thank you for the impartation of the prophetic in our lives. Bukwan Jina says, Jesus is the source of my life. That I need a touch of the Lord. All for Brookman Jr. And then we have Apena Nani. Six times and seasons. So um, on this note, we would like to say a very big thank you for staying tuned with us. We have a couple of programs upcoming. So um, this week is Christmas. I said Christmas here. Okay, so it's Easter. And it's all about Jesus Christ, the cross, and the blood. We have an upcoming program from Wednesday 27 to 31st, which is Sunday. On Wednesday, the theme is the voice of the blood. So if you want to hear the voice of the blood, there's no other place than the Macaulay Center. So our main speaker is Bishop Eddie Music. Our father is here. It's a wedding. the word is going to prophesy is going to give us directions of the spirit that we can be able to attract our blessings so see you there and also at 2 p.m tomorrow papa says for one-on-one -on -one counseling i want to see you that's the perfect time to have a word of the issue thank you very much daddy and god bless you and thank you for seeing you too Bye. Bye.